have you back to think like a wise human humane architecture, uh, broadcasting from three different locations again, myself, and we can, if we can get the first picture up for that, the first extra picture up for that one. Um, we're um, following our cross-cultural culinary connoisseurs, Joey and Clara, who are moving on to their next pit stop, which is getting closer to the ocean again. This is the harbor city of Rockstock, where they're moving. And second extra slide, please. Um, it's coastal, so this is the situation we actually currently have here. There's something interesting that Soto and I were contemplating about, which are the beach baskets. And uh, so um, we're our, our show is uh, looking, um, uh, we're still in the COVID-19 clause. We're basically looking for clues for a, for a better future. And uh, we have been starting to uh, find out that they actually might lie in the, in the past. And yes. for that, today's guest, our DeSoto, again, back in Honolulu. Hi, DeSoto. Hello, Martin. And we have, hello, Dakota, and we have our guest is uh, Edward Fillingsworth, a long term friend and business partner, Larry Stricker, uh, back in his Napa Valley uh, vineyard, Gutsell Vineyard in, uh, in California. So good to have you back, Larry. Hello, Martin. So let's bring up our actual first slide here. And, uh, it's based upon a, a picture you added, uh, sharing with us the photo at the very top left, and tell us the whole context. Well, those are two small minibuses that were actually made to ferry people between the Kahala Hilton Hotel and Waikiki back in the 1960s when the Kahala Hilton Hotel still was uh, brand new. And it was considered too far away from where all the action was in Waikiki, so they ferried people in these buses to get them there. Um, and it seems absurd now that it was considered that far away, but it was. But we also see here, too, that uh, modes of transportation are still important on Oahu. And since we're going to be talking about Koholina and the what was built as the Iilani Hotel, we're also going to be seeing that um, the train system that's being installed right now, being built right now by the city of Honolulu, will not extend that far, but that is something that will be bringing Koalina closer to where the action is in urban Honolulu. Yeah. And as we've been using modes of transportation as vehicles for a thought, I want to point out that I was happy to see that these old trolleys back in the 60s actually had operable windows. Our heavy rail does not have that anymore. It initially right. had a waste and painted on, now a rainbow as the only thing that tries to desperately make it look tropical, and it's pretty much a hermetic, invasive thing. So that's a little bad. And uh, talking invasive um, and not tropical exotic, let's go to the next slide. Uh, we saw this online, and uh, again, with our analogies of cars, the mobile and the immobile, and the top right is obviously a pin. 1993, or this is a little later model, a uh, Lincoln Town car. And uh, we compare this to the uh, rendering at the very bottom, which is what the recent developer uh, had put out, what they wanted to do. And it, it made us get goose pimples as much as we saw what they did to the, to the Lincoln up there, because there's some. Uh, dramatic changes to uh, the to the original condition, which luckily stayed uh, the the current one. And next slide for that, because the situation that we're talking about is this one here. And this is an elegant gentleman, your friend and partner, business partner, Ron Lindgren, Larry, who is uh, walking down the stairs of your very elegant uh, open lanai lobby. So um, obviously that is kept including the very large vegetation that you guys uh, signature-wise always build into the into your architecture, literally and figuratively, into these planted troughs. So we're very happy to see that still alive. In the it's it's, way. it's uh, reminiscent of both uh, Kahala and Manalani with the, the staircase and the openness to on, on both sides with the views out to the landscaping and the ocean beyond. 
Absolutely. Um, next slide um, is a picture I was able to take uh, somewhere in 13 or so, so before the recent renovation, uh, which is generally good, but little teardrop here. These were some very fine pieces of artwork from, uh, you know, even earlier area than you're alluding to, Kahala and the, the, the good old 60s, and they're gone, so that's kind of a little bit of uh, a teardrop, but again, one can bring them back. So, you know, I would like to see them again. Did you guys have actually any choice to recommend artwork, Larry, to the client? Uh, not really. I think uh, we we had uh, we had a, a glass alpaca flower, uh, huge in scale for the originally for the lobby, but when, once the construction started, there was very little budget for for artwork. So that mm -hmm. typically that that comes from some benefactor after the hotel opens. Mm -hmm. Another artwork that's for the next slide. Share with us a little bit more what that is. It's the uh, the uh, uh, manta ray uh, pond, and uh, we, we see again the. Uh, the uh, lobby uh, connection to the guest rooms and the openness, the lushness of the, the planting and how we, again, similar to the uh, Kahala on the right with the, uh, uh, the sequest uh, and, and the, uh, the animation of the, of the uh, water feature. And that animation comes in large part from the creatures that live in it, particularly at the Kahala Hotel, where there still are porpoises to this day from what was when it was originally designed and first built in the 60s. That was always a feature, and they're still there today, even though the bridge across their pond has been redeveloped and looks very different. Yeah, and the picture bottom left, I took in when I first saw your project in 13, and obviously for a German, you know, man rays in, in a hotel lobby are something very exotic, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. And again, at the top left is the picture that when Ron and I stopped by there at, at sunset, we're very happy to see that, that beautiful marriage between a, a build and the natural environment being more than intact, so... Once again, kudos to uh, Four Seasons Operation. Uh, next slide. Well, well this is uh, what you see when you're standing in the in the main uh, uh, core of, of your building, the big atrium with a glass roof. Uh, this is a picture I've been taking again together with Ron. And uh, you had shared with us that little detail of having been shooting for 100%, having your uh, vegetated trough balustrades and guardrails on every floor, and you ended up having to be happy with 50% for every other one. And here, uh, other than this, in other projects, we're seeing them, uh, you know, living and alive. So maintenance is not using, you know, cost as an excuse to say they're you know, too complicated, too costly to operate. These people seem to be very aware that they are part of, of Killingsworth, and so they're they're keeping it, and that's that's absolutely uh, wonderful to see. Uh, well, it's always the slide. case when it when it comes to value engineering that uh, the uh, the contractor is is always looking to to save the owner some. Some dollars, so we, we found that uh, sometimes you have to shoot higher, and and in your original design have have more planting than landscaping than than you that, that you can afford some straw dogs to be pulled out and, and uh, still end up with the, uh, the feeling that, that that you want to incorporate in the design. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and here is, uh, I came back one more time, actually, after my trip with Larry, and by that time, I had lifts with this uh, canoe up there into the lobby, so it's floating up there. And again, the comparison of mobile and immobile, last show we had said, well, there was no such thing as a woody 
a town car, but then there are these two examples which are rather exotic by themselves because they were not the, the, the street versions. They're kind of, you know, out of the, uh, out of the normal, out of the box cars. And so, um, you were pretty kind, Mary, as you are anyways, in saying, you know, you don't mind a little accent they were adding to, um, the reveal in between your quadruple columns, which is sort of this zigzagging, uh, wooden inlay, and um, that's certainly, you know, not really in your face. It's still rather humble and, 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 and you know, again, uh, not superimposed over your, but sort of trying to, um, you know, be within your guys' language. Uh, next slide. Um, however, um, they, they have a, another piece of, you know, artwork in, in the lobby, uh, that you see at the bottom down there. Uh, the, the city I'm right now, so Joey and Clara's new home, uh, Rockstock, is pretty close to Hamburg, which is the more famous harbor town. And at the top right, you see one of his architects, who is Carson Rock, who is a proud owner of the 1960s um, a town car, excuse me, Lincoln Continental called at that time. And that one we obviously know from Kennedy, Kennedy having driven that a few months before his tragic assassination in it in Texas. So uh, there's no doubt that, you know, 60s uh, Lincoln Continentals are absolute uh, collectibles, and, and they're, they're very highly appreciated and valued for that reason. So uh, next slide. Um, and uh, on, the, on the left, we want to these, these – um, Posters of movies uh, show that while the, 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 the town cars from the 80s are maybe as appreciated, yes, as the ones from the 60s, but your architecture, as we've been pointing out, we called you guys the best postmodern architect, and here also a 1980s town car has been appreciated in the movie The uh, Lincoln Liar with um, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, which was shot, um, if I'm not mistaken, in 2011, I believe. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about that. Your your project itself has been uh, the backdrop of movies, and you guys talk a little bit about the one you see. Well, one of them, of course, is this Blue Crush fantasy of female surfers. And Larry, you pointed out that in the plot, uh, one of them is supposedly working as a maid at the Hilani Hotel, which, in reality, you don't have young, blonde, Holly women working as maids in hotels in Hawaii. Right, right. Um, but there's also this other film, Snatched, which stars Goldie Hawn. And, Martin, you pointed out that the Hilani Hotel in that situation was supposed to be some other place. It wasn't actually portraying itself. It was supposed to be another tropical location. And Mauna Lani itself, back, going back to that predecessor, has been in movies and TV shows, too, one of them being the film Black Widow. But I also remember my sister-in-law and my brother and their daughter being extras for some TV show at Mauna Lani when my brother was working there. So you do see Hollywood making use of these buildings that we're talking about. Yeah, I think the, the Monolani yeah. was, was home to Kevin Cosner. He was yes. shooting uh, Waterworld, so he, yes. I think he was there a good six months uh, staying in the bungalows. Yes. And carrying on a notorious affair with one of the women who was working as a, a stunt person, I believe. But we won't get into all of that, Kurt. Yeah, and let's go to the next slide, uh, and let's continue to talk about fame and, um, I guess, celebrity status uh, in the world of architecture. And you, um, Mary, share a little bit with us your encounterments with architects of, of that kind, uh, uh, like Tori Lido, who we see up here, but also Shigeru Bon, you were sharing with us, right? Yeah, we, we had done several projects in Japan, and, and uh, one of the more notable was a ski resort on the island of Hokkaido called Tamamu. And uh, the first, uh, we, did, we did a master plan for the 10,000-bed uh, uh, ski resort, which included several hotels. We 
they did build the first hotel and a, uh, a water park uh, with a pool the size of the football field. <laughs> and uh, during this, uh, this time we spent on Hokkaido, uh, uh, did meet Tadao Ando, and uh, he designed the, uh, the the ski resort that was in the summer was a, a, a very desirable place, and a lot of Japanese weddings took place out there. So Tadao designed a beautiful chapel at the resort. And, uh, was was interesting uh, learning his philosophy and and how how similar. Uh, to the uh, the expressionism and and the uh, the cleanness of the design and not encumbered by a lot of decor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that even goes to the next generation. We see Toyo Ido up here, and we were saying in the Volume One show that there are some proof of evidences and reasons. They're obvious why Ilani maybe has been is the most original, and here on the client slash developer's website, uh, they're saying Toyota has been uh, part of the developing team as well as the client, and they express in written form that we quote here that they're very aware of you guys' legacy. Uh, here is uh, uh, that uh, library project that's most famous for Toyota's body of work. So again, we 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 popped in that stretch limit and pound car that, again, is a synonym for luxury, for uh, commodity and comfort of um, the true American kind. And so our obviously your guys' reward project, again, a grace to see. Uh, and you guys, uh, you know, your celebrity status is going to be um, uh, basically cemented by Eric Bricker who's uh, making a movie about your guys' work after he has done one uh, initial one about Julius Schulman, who is your photographer, and then uh, currently coming out into the movie theaters is one about uh, the, the legacy of Airstream trailers called uh, Elimination. So next is uh, a movie about your guys' work, which is another great compliment that just shows, again, how much of a true American classic you guys are. So... Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, while exotic escapism expert, expert Suzanne has uh, repeatedly uh, reminded us of this sort of tragic five, six, seven year remodel interval, we're saying here that hotels are places of memory, obviously, and maybe it's good to keep, if there's a really good gestalt to begin with, to keep that legacy unaltered. Uh, over the generations, so that every generation can have the same um, memory of uh, pure, uh, in a pure, authentic way. And so, you are a father of two children, Barry, and uh, who are grown now, and so I am. And my kids are there at the very top. Joey and Lenny, part of their illegal driving uh, training has been in that town car. So, so again, uh, they will always remember the town car for what it was, and obviously wouldn't like it seen pimps, which didn't really happen in, in your case here, but in other projects. But uh, this is a picture again from me in 2013 when I first saw, and please forgive me for the, it was probably an iPod or something like for the quality of the image, but when you cl look close, as a bad thing, you don't see the uh, vegetation, the artificially incorporated uh, vegetation, um, sort of reanimated yet, but you also don't see the, the, the wooden inlay in the reveals of the columns. So, uh, again, we're, we're just saying, again, in the next intervals, maybe you want to strip back again and, and stay even closer to the original. Because the original, uh, and we put something in next slide, Larry, in the last uh, volume one, you had said there's actually a Carlos Denise rendering that shows even more how you originally imagined the project. And that we will see in the next slide and share with us a little bit in detail. Yeah, I think, uh, again, the lesson we learned uh, from our previous projects is that if, if you want uh, vegetation and planters on the lanai's, that you, you need to start with a design that incorporates more than you want, because it seems it's always... Uh, always a target of the value engineering to uh, eliminate uh, its, uh, its
it's a, it is a costly item, and uh, but it is uh, you know part of the uh, part of our vocabulary. It, it's it's part of the of being in Hawaii to to have the uh, the vegetation, the, the beautiful flowers, and, and that, and uh, that that's uh, what what uh, we were able to retain. Uh, from the rendering here, you see that we showed them on uh, at every level, and we were able to retain 50% of them, which still carries the, the feeling. Yeah, and that way it looks more like art in nature than architecture, which is great. Yeah. This would be more tropical exotic, right? Right. And next slide, uh, the sort of share with us a little bit. We've been talking about the history of the place, but talk about the anticipated future of it a little bit. Well, the entire Koalina Resort area was constructed in what was originally a very deserted and far away location. And this aerial photograph leaves out to the immediate right the presence of Campbell Industrial Park. And that was built 60 years ago in this location because it was so far away. And then as time passed, obviously civilization crept out to it. What we see also is that originally those three bays that were carved out, or there's more than that, but the coastline originally did not have those sandy coved beaches. All of those are artificially built, and they were built specifically to be the basis for a series of hotels for an entire hotel complex as well as marinas. None of that has ever been fully developed out or built out the way it was originally imagined back when Koalina was first built. Yeah. And we're saying in the discussion before the show that maybe, you know, the architecture that followed after the Ihilani, Larry said they were more about, you know, obeying to the code and regulations than really understanding the philosophy behind your projects, and that's why they sort of mimic the stepping down and the pitch roof, but everything else falls pretty short, and that's uh, kind of unfortunate, but maybe not as unfortunate as what we might see in the future, which is the next slide. And you guys tell me what you think about the progression of the resort, this uh, step being called the Atlantis. Well, the Atlantis is part of a chain of extremely expensive hotels, which incorporate huge water features, aquariums, etc. This is the first rendering of the Atlantis, which was proposed for Koalina to be just a stone's throw from Ihilani, and it had this arched pass-through, which mimicked the one which was built in Dubai, as I remember. And unfortunately, we also see a little picture of the Disney Aulani Resort, which again does not follow the original design requirements that Ihilani did. And yeah. this looks kind of preposterous to my mind, but I think if we go to the next slide, we see what was replaced, what replaced that proposal was one that's even more preposterous, which is this one, this sort of wavy, silvery, large, huge, immense, grossly overdone building that, again, is supposed to be an Atlantis hotel. I personally don't think it's very likely that this is ever going to be built. The current financial situation, and particularly the tourism, the loss of tourism due to COVID-19, means it's very unlikely that this is ever going to disfigure that particular area of Koalina. And I'm sure, Larry, you have opinions on this as well, in addition to the dogs barking in the background who sound like they're lamenting this as well. Right, right. No, I think uh, they, they definitely they came close to out, out Disney and Disney with this project. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I hope we get, uh, I hope COVID saves us from this one. <laughs> yeah, will. not only do the show the, the rendering at the top left, brutally how the Lanai that don't deserve the name by their body balcony are too hot to sit on. But I think that one of the cool bloodiness of the project reminds me of the last uh, 2000 uh, town car bloodiness that basically killed the tradition of town cars at all. So I guess uh, hopefully, you know, this project gets killed as well, as you guys said. 
And until the next slide, to end on positive notes, as always, um, I found that the owner and developer of, of a new uh, step is basically prides himself of being published in things like Wallpaper Magazine, which we have been lucky ones. And so we want to take uh, the chance to say up there is a very early uh, illustration of Primitivo 1, which is obviously a tribute to you guys' work, structural expressionism, a planted vegetative troughs. And while I, I, we were suggesting that people say, okay, Mark, you're just daydreaming. This is, you know, maybe not going to happen. This is too way out. And, you know, um, thank you, Larry. You saved me because go to the next slide. Uh, at my very first visit, um, I saw the situation that I asked Ron when we went there again to position there. And this is for maybe the ultimate of tropical exotic fenestration that should be mandated by cold and happen anywhere on the Hawaiian Islands because it's all open, easy breezy, and easy breezy. And it has plants as fenestration and a curtain. And it, and it couldn't be much better, better than that. And so this is what you see. Also then bottom right is primitiva. So it's very much, you know, the plants are green here, but it's again, it's more tree texture um, archi nature and then architecture, so very much a tribute again to your original uh, proposal uh, of Ilani. And to top it even with one more, the last uh, slide, next slide, and last slide here, this is one of our emerging talents, uh, Jonathan Quack, who uh, is also very much um, continuing your guys' legacy. Your structural expressionism at its best as part of uh, the jungleism development in downtown. And the next step we go is that the instill of the frame, the three dimensional frame, could be even more flexible, could be even um, tensile and be, be membranes rather than, than, than hard surfaces. So, um, once again, and the, the, the car we see in there at the bottom right is actually now a rebirth of, they're not redoing the town car, but they're redoing the Continental. And this is the current version of the Continental. And I snapped that picture when it parked at Koalina when I was there the last time. So that one was actually fairly decently uh, gestalted again. So all things come full circle. And we're at the end of the show. So uh, thank you, Larry, so much again for sharing uh, your legacy with us and, and also having pointed out how much of an inspiration for the future it, it will be. So um, we hope to uh, have you again with us at some point. Uh, we stay in touch and we dig out more projects and uh, want to hear you and uh, as, a, as, an, as an ear and, and an eyewitness. So uh, until then... Thank you. Uh, with you. Thank you, Larry. Okay, stay safe and sound out there, and I hope your vineyards can fully open at sometime very soon. All right, thank you. Okay, until then, bye-bye, everyone. Bye.